Atlantis, mythical continent that has captured the imagination of people for centuries due to its advanced civilization and mysterious disappearance. Was the downfall of this advanced civilization triggered by an accidental natural catastrophe or did they destroy themselves? We'll try to find out together in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. Many believe that in order to more easily enter other dimensions, the Atlanteans tried to create a powerful interdimensional portal in the area of the Bermuda Triangle. This gives us another hypothesis about the communication problems and mysterious disappearances in this area. As we know, portals are doors to other dimensions. They allow us to pass through the veil and feel what is happening in another time period. Perhaps a lack of understanding of the lethal force of this endeavor contributed to the downfall of the Atlanteans, just as the Montauk project was abandoned when our scientists were unable to control their experiments. The Atlanteans followed the principles of sacred geometry and this could be seen mostly in their architecture. They preferred to build their homes in a round or octagonal shape because they believed that a round home was more harmonious for the spirit and believed that the geometric shape would better channel the energy of the universe. According to the theosophist Scott Elliott, the temples of Atlantis were massive structures of gigantic proportions, somewhat resembling the great halls of the temples of Egypt, but built on a much larger scale. They were built in a pyramid shape where the energy channeled from the universe was more readably available. For added power, they placed a powerful quartz crystal near or on top of the structure. These were places of regeneration and recharging for when one is in a meditative state in a pyramid it is possible to pick up the heightened vibrations of the structure and restore their energy. To use the energy portals, the Atlanteans used a key that resembled the human body, made of minerals. This key is known as the Ankh. When an initiate held the Ankh while chanting, the Ankh began to resonate with the energy in two directions, one positive and the other negative charged energy. These two energies created a neutral point between them that expanded and moved up and down, forming an ellipse shape. This resembled the way energy in the body flows through the chakras. According to Casey, when the Atlanteans began their spiritual ascension, they wore pale green robes. Advancing through the journey, they changed their garb to light blue, and finally the white robes reserved for the highest orders. On special occasions, the unique dark blue dresses passed down from one generation of sages to the next. Healers that wore special headbands with a silver line were specializing in mental healing and an oricalcum headband indicated skills in physical medicine or surgery. Oricalcum was the fabled metal of Atlantis, but its composition is a mystery. In ancient Greek, the word simply means golden metal. Plato says that oricalcum was something that in his day was known only by name, but was once a precious metal that sparkled like fire. It was probably an alloy of gold and copper or meteoric iron. Mentions of oricalcum of Atlantis appeared 600 years before the time of Plato in the works of the Greek poet Homer, who mentions it in the hymn to Aphrodite as a golden metal. And now comes the question of what exactly happened that things went wrong and the balance got upset? Did this great civilization disappear as a result of a random natural cataclysm? Or did they themselves cause their own extinction? Everything in nature moves in cycles. The development of civilizations does not move in a straight line, but in the form of a wave. There is a rise and there is a fall. When an empire reaches its greatest development, we know that its end, its fall, is near. There are reports that during its existence, Atlantis suffered destruction as many as three times, the last of which happened about 12,000 years ago. And it was precisely this event that led to the complete end of the continent. So what caused this ending? 
It's hard to pinpoint one specific reason. Different sources give different reasons for the fall of Atlantis. Only when we put them together can we see how they are connected and each contributed to the end of this amazing civilization. First of all, is there any scientific evidence of what happened 12,000 years ago? Scientists have several theories about what was responsible for the catastrophic event of 10,000 BC. Most likely, a huge shock caused the planet's axis to shift and this disturbed the stability of the hot, dense liquid that lies beneath its surface. Inevitably, the fragile bark crumbled and cracked in vulnerable places. Red-hot magma from the interior of the Earth shot up the great speed through these spaces and melted the bottom of the Earth. What then has exterminated so many species and whole genera in 10,000 BC? The mind at first is irresistibly hurried into the belief of some great catastrophe, but thus to destroy animals, both large and small, in South Patagonia, in Brazil, on the Cordillera of Peru, in North America up to the Bering Straits, we must shake the entire framework of the globe. The agitation of the Earth's axis, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and flood offer the external physical explanations for the sinking of Atlantis. But another source of the catastrophic devastation lies in the thoughts and inclinations of men. Could it be that their lack of attachment to our beautiful world, their selfish pursuits and their immortality contributed to this downfall? Bashar, a multidimensional extraterrestrial being, talks about the fall of Atlantis in one of the channelings. Bashar relates that the final destruction was caused by a comet that entered the solar system. Its orbit crossed that of the Earth twice a year. For about 20 years during its passage around the Earth, parts of it fell to the surface and caused destruction mainly in the North American and Atlantic regions. At some point, however, a larger piece passed through the atmosphere and hit Earth, causing a gigantic tsunami waves that completely obliterated Atlantis as well as the cultures along the ocean coast. But this comet, according to Bashar, was no accident, and people themselves caused it with the decline of consciousness, corruption and division. And those who began to invoke fear were influenced by the corruption of the concept of the illusion of power. Your psychic, Edgar Cayce, he called them the children of light and the children of darkness, and he goes into detail about what happened. It was the division of Atlantis. What led to the corruption of a portion of Atlanteans and how did this division occur? If we have to summarize the chronological order, it will probably be something like this. Somewhere around the time of the fourth Atlantean sub-race, they gradually turn to the technological aspect they want to control the whole Earth and time with technology through the portals. This makes them vulnerable to dark alien influences, the draconian Martians who take advantage and begin to manipulate them. A division happens, children of light versus children of darkness, Belial. The dark ones wage wars with other civilizations. The light ones realize that the end of Atlantis is near and begin to gradually move towards the colonies and prepare the lands for settlement. A cataclysm occurs, Atlantis sinks. Thought and the other higher beings carried the Atlantean culture to other parts of the planet. At its very beginning, Atlantis was created as a place to unite all into one. Although it began as a spiritually orientated community, it gradually shifted to a scientific and a technological, technocratic empire. Between 15,000 and 12,000 BC, during the last sub-race, the Atlanteans ruled the entire Earth and the portals to it. It is believed that most of the pyramids around the world date from this period through which the Atlanteans downloaded information from above and communicated with each other as well as with extraterrestrial races. How did the alien races influence the development of the Atlanteans? One of the great threats to Atlantis came from above. The alien races of the Galactic Council viewed the humans of Earth differently. Some believed that humans would be a unifying force for most alien civilizations, but others saw us simply as a means of experimentation. 
Over time, more and more beings from different star systems tried to explore Earth and one of the groups wanted to capture the technology for controlling the portals. In the end, the balance titled towards technological development, interest in scientific achievement gradually displaced the compassionate relationships, sharing of resources and the harmony with nature that characterized life in both Lemuria and Atlantis for tens of thousands of years. Gradually, a class society began to develop, in which the knowledgeable were extremely powerful, not always to the benefit of humanity. According to Casey's interpretations, for most of their long history, the Atlanteans practiced the law of oneness. They were compassionate in their dealings with others and lovingly cared for the Earth with respect and consideration. Gradually, as the emphasis on technology grew and focused on scientific achievements, they lost respect for nature and tried to take control over it. Natural resources have become something to be used for one's own benefit. In the Emerald Tablets, Thoth explains, In ancient Atlantis there was light. Yes, darkness too. It was hidden in everything. Some of those who had risen high among men fell from the light into darkness. They were proud of their knowledge, proud of their place among people. They dug deep into the forbidden, opened the door that let down. They wanted to gain more knowledge, but they wanted to bring it up from below. He who descends must have balance, or else he is limited by the lack of our light. They opened through their knowledge, paths forbidden to men. Although the original intention was for Atlantis to be a point of balance between spirit and matter, things didn't turn out that way and the dark forces crept in among the Atlanteans. The story goes like this. According to the book Our Cosmic Origins, as well as according to the Terra Papers, there was a split in one of the alien races on the planet, more specifically between the Anunnaki. Marduk, the son of Enki, wanted to take control of the planet. In order to make a coup, he attracted to his side one of the ill-intentioned alien races, the Draconians. They were a faction of the Orion Empire that had long inhabited Mars, but after misusing advanced technology, they destroyed their home and now sought to take over another planet. The Atlanteans, as the most advanced human civilization on Earth, with the technologies for interdimensional travel and control over energy portals, seemed like the perfect place for the Draconians to implant themselves. Thus, under their influence, over time, the leaders of Atlantis split into two groups. The children of the Law of One and the Sons of Belial were called Sons of Darkness. Technology took a leading role in their lives and had a dehumanizing effect. People became obsessed with acquiring possessions and moved to cities where material objects were more readily available. They replaced mental tools with machines in a way similar to our dependence on phones and computers. Having further fragmented their consciousness into the physical, they lost respect for that which they could not perceive with their five senses and all that lay beyond the three-dimensional environment. The spiritual quality of life became unimportant to them. When they separated from their creator, moral standards failed. Anger, greed, hatred and envy increased. Sex orgies, robberies and murders were very common. The sons of Belial dominated. Edgar Cayce describes them as sinful and incritious Plato says the portion of divinity in them weakened. Eventually, a natural disaster occurred that destroyed their civilization. In the book The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, the older Durmvalo Melchizedek claims that he receives his knowledge from none other than Thoth himself. He tells that about 13 to 16,000 years ago, like a bolt from the blue, a comet approached the Earth. A serious conflict was brewing in Atlantis. The sons of Belial, who were in the minority even though they held the power, wanted to blast the comet into the sky with their laser technology. But the Children of Light refused, believing that the comet was part of the divine plan. 
In fact, they were aware that the end of their civilization was approaching and had begun to prepare the places to transfer the knowledge after Atlantis was destroyed. According to Melchizedek's account, when the comet fell, it destroyed part of Atlantis, but it marked the complete division between the Atlanteans and gave the impetus to the sons of Belial to seize power on Earth. To this day, they began to build a system of facilities with which to build an artificial Merkaba similar to that of Mars, which led to its destruction. If the Martians had succeeded in creating a harmonious artificial Merkaba, they would have achieved complete control over the planet. The Martians erected their facilities on Atlantis, but as they did not have the complete knowledge of how to activate an artificial Merkaba and control their facilities, they lost control over it. The consequences were catastrophic and the lower dimensions of Earth were torn apart. Dronvalo says that the attempt by the Martians to seize all power over over the world took place near one of the Atlantic islands, in the area we now call the Bermuda Triangle, and the reason for the anomalies that occurred there is a device left over from them, which is now still active. Did the comet cause the sinking of Atlantis or the failed attempts to control the energy portals and the Merkaba, or both? There is a theory according to which 12,000 years ago a change of magnetic poles occurred on the planet, perhaps as a result of the fall of the comet. Could this be the cause of the global cataclysm, the rise of water levels and the disappearance of this civilization? After the fall of Atlantis, some of the higher spiritual beings survived. In some sources, they are called the Osirian group. The predecessors of this group were the Resistance, the White Brotherhood's sisterhood, consisting of benevolent beings who opposed Marduk's plan. They kept their 12 strands of DNA fully functional and thus managed to avoid the cataclysm of Atlantis. They were led by their leader, Osiris, who according to some later became known as the Egyptian god. The other one was Thoth. In the Emerald Tablets, Thoth recounts, the all-seeing dweller called me, thought to him, and gave me orders on what to do, saying, take all thought, all thy wisdom, take all the manuscripts, take all your magic, go and keep the manuscripts until the time when the light increases among men, you must be a light through the ages, hidden, yet discovered by enlightened men. Overall, the earth we give you power, but we are free to give it or take it away. Gather now the sons of Atlantean, take them and escape to the people of the rock caves. Fly to the land of the children of Chem. Then I gathered the sons of Atlantean, I loaded all my sunken Atlantis manuscripts onto a spaceship, I gathered all my powers, my many tools of mighty magic. Then we soared up on the wings of the morning. We rose high above the temple, leaving three of us and the dweller behind, deep in the holes beneath the temple. Down beneath the waves sank the great temple, closing the way to the lords of the cycles. But always to him who has knowledge, the way to Amenti will be open. Then we fled swiftly on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Chem. There, by my power, I defeated them and ruled. I raised to the light the children of Chem. After the flood destroyed everything, the Chosen hid in a place called Surmedo, which means magical place, and in time this place became a temple. This place is the Sphinx, also called the Guardian. Thought, there are civilizations of time and civilizations of eternity. Deep beneath the rocks I have buried my spaceship awaiting the time when man can be free. Upon it I erected a sign in the form of a lion, and yet human-like. There, under the image still rests my spaceship, ready to be retrieved if needed. Know, O oh man, that far in the future invaders will come from deep space. Then awake you who have wisdom, take out my ship and win easily. Deep beneath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. Each is a key to the other. Each is a gate that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind. Seek and the door to life will be yours. 
I'm looking for you in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in the wall. Use the key of the weak and the way down will open before you. I gave you my wisdom. I gave you my way. Follow the path. Reveal my secrets. Can we draw a parallel between the singing of Atlantis and our modern civilization? The similarities between the last day of Atlantis and the development of our civilization are obvious and disturbing. In addition to the lack of respect for the gifts of the earth, the crime and immortality that characterized the last days of Atlantis are still widespread today. Achieving personal wealth and power is of great importance to most of the people who live in technologically advanced nations. Scientific materialism has once again taken over, resulting in many people believing that they do not need a relationship with their creator or a strict moral code. Will we be able to control the artificial intelligence that scientists are improving every day? And shall we not destroy ourselves by our deadly weapons? The future is not rigidly fixed and we are in control of our own choices. It is up to us to avoid the terrible fate of Atlanteans. The situation in the world will not change immediately, but from observing the mistakes of the past, we have knowledge to create a society free from greed, oppression, hatred and violence, and where technology and wisdom are in divine balance. We bow before you and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open and until we meet again.